What are some of your one night stand horror stories? After taking a girl home I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. When I got back to my room she had gone leaving only a large wet patch where she had wet the bed. She is now referred to only as a snowman. Had an occupied hookup with a girl that said she worked in her father's auto garage. Everything went fine and she wound up spending the night I woke up the next morning and she had snuck out. I had a text that said why are there pictures of other girls on your phone. Of course these were pictures of myself and friends, some of which were girls, at bars and concerts and nothing particularly zy. I though to myself, thank god she ditched, I certainly don't want to hang out with a girl that will go through my phone while I'm asleep on the first date, or ever. Later that day I go to start my car won't start, my mechanic said somebody had cut several wires for the ignition system. Guess she knew her sh- I woke up to the chick's boss standing in the living room the next morning. Supposedly she had been banging him and he wasn't too happy to see an extra vehicle in the yard of the house she was renting from him. Needless to say, I politely left as the fireworks started between them. He was nice enough to leave me out of it. I've posted this story elsewhere but it's pretty freaking relevant. Anyway, I'd gone out with a few friends, promptly got wasted, and by some small miracle ended up going back to this fairly attractive girl's place. Morning after she decides to soothe my hangover with a BJ, but before proceeding she says you told me last night you don't really do one night stands, hope you remember my name I completely froze, I buy some time by laughing, and through sheer luck I notice a picture frame with Emilia written on it in bold colorful letters. Yeah that was her sister's name, she died the previous summer, and I did not get that blowy. Went home with a girl, fooled around a while, then we fell asleep. Woke up in the middle of the night to her yelling, what are you doing apparently I had either a blacked out moment or was sleepwalking. Either way, I was peeing like a racehorse on her bedroom floor. I promptly pinched it off, ran to the bathroom, and finished my business before going back in to help her clean up the mess, totally speechless. The next morning her alarm went off and she said, I am going to take a shower and go to work. You should get ready too, I put on my clothes and left before she got out of the shower and haven't talked to her since. Edit, wow, my highest rated comment is about peeing on the floor. At least I got fake internet points out of this awful experience. Also, glad to know I'm not the only one this has happened to. Came back to my dorm, had drunk an ex, passed out. Woke up to find an empty box of bagel bites on top of the microwave. Son of a b ate my bites and scrammed. Ate your bagel bites. That truly is horrific. This should have been labeled NSFW. I'm disgusted. My first time was a one night stand. The ex was surprisingly decent all credits to her however the girl had a latex allergy or something so I didn't use a condom. I would have to be really unlucky to get an STD or baby from my first at bat this was my dumb logic fast forward a few weeks and I was at the campus health center. Luckily it cleared up with some antibiotics, life lesson learned. Fast forward about a year and I get a friend request from the girl. Her profile picture is her, in a hospital, with her newborn child. I almost had a heart attack and did some rapid Facebook sleuthing. The following is excerpts from my mind during my Facebook investigation the picture was posted the day after the kid was born which was September. According to my phone's text records I had X with her in, late the 9th to the 3rd of March equals 6 and that baby wasn't premature. I'm in the clear. Wait that means she was, when we, oh wheel the important thing is it's not mine. Life lesson reinforced. She didn't have a latex allergy dude. Can't get double pregnant. Not many can say they had a threesome their first time, way to go man. Went home with a girl. Went to the bathroom naked during the night. Couldn't remember what door I was in. Saw the bathroom light was on and peeked my head in and it was her dad. I ran down to best stairs to hear this what the frick are you doing. 
I couldn't remember her name and just responded with, I came home with a girl. He must have only had one daughter and directed me to her room. The next morning when she was about to drop me home, she introduced me to her parents. Her dad said I know who he freaking is, I caught him walking around our house at 4am. Not remembering his daughter's name is really the icing on the cake. Went to the kitchen in just my panties to grab a glass of water. I opened the fridge and peeked inside only to hear a familiar voice behind me say, Miss Galore I covered up as best I could with the rag hanging from the fridge handle and slowly turned around. It was one of my preschool students. I've only met his mom because his parents were separated and only spent some weekends with his dad. He was hungry and I ended up making him some pancakes. The strangest part of this story is that a 5 year old recognized you from behind without seeing your face. Topless teacher plus pancakes. What more could a kid want? A couple of years ago I was at a bar. I was playing some pool with some friends when a very attractive older woman came up and started talking with us. She had to have been in her later 30s, I was 21 at the time, so of course I was all for it. We started talking and drinking more, she was very flirty and I could tell I was in. I had mentioned that I only lived about 3 blocks away from where we were, she instantly closed her bar tab and we left. We got back to my place and wasted no time getting to the dirty. Halfway through she decided to perform a little oral action, she tried to go down as far as she could, but when she did she started gagging and threw up on me while I was still in her. Needless to say I was a little grossed out and got up took a shower. I didn't want to embarrass her or make her feel bad, so I walked her back to the bar where we met. As I dropped her back off, one of my friends asked where I had gone and noticed I was wearing different clothes, I told him not to worry about it. She then pretty much yelled across the whole bar, oh he's just peered off that I threw up on his D. From then on out, everyone at the bar calls me Rafe. Shoulder kept fricking that vomit face. Other than cute slim girl stealing literally every food item from townhouse in college I don't have any personal horror stories. My buddy however. Different story. Go to the bar one night in our early 20s. He meets this girl, she's cute all of us agree and tell him to go for it. The rest of us strike out, he takes her home. Few hours later, light sirens loud cop knocking on the door and windows. Cops come flying in guns drawn searching the house. Arrest both of them. Come to find out, she was a 16 year old run away from a few states away with a rather impressive criminal record and pending charges. Buddy was arrested because age of consent was 17. He's still dealing with ramifications of that one. Still blows my mind. She looked older, said she was 24 and certainly didn't act like a 16 year old. TLDR, check your hookups ID so you don't get arrested in the middle of the night. That's why strict liability is so bullish. Not knowing she was underage should always be a defense against statutory rape charges if it's in good faith, not like I met her at a high school football game and avoided learning her age. If a chick was in a freaking bar, and physically could be believed to be 18, there's no freaking way it's right for him to be in trouble. I ended up alone and drunk in Vegas. My pops was flying in the next morning to meet me. So, I had a room to myself. I end up meeting a freshly divorced cougar, and being 26 at the time, I had to go for it. By this time it's 4-5 in the morning. We are going it for a couple of hours, this lady was a contortionist. 7 o'clock rolls around and mid thrusting I hear a key opening my door. I sober up faster than I ever have in my life, and yell, dad, don't come and I knew it had to be him. It was. My dad pauses, and asks why. The only thing I could think of was the big Glibowski for some reason, and through the partially opened door I say, because I have a lady friend in here. I take his bag inside, finish freaking the cougar, get her number, kick her out, and go find my dad gambling at 7am because his son is a scumbag. 
Me and Pops never speak of it, and I avoided my hotel so I would not have to explain the cougar if we would have seen her. TL. Doctor got busted by my Pops having ex with a cougar. As a father if my son were banging someone I'd be a lot more understanding about it. Fish boy. Guy I knew from school came over after we flirted for weeks and after some making out we get ready to do the deed. He then proceeds to flop on top of me like he's either a fish or he's having a seizure. I thought maybe it was a one time thing, but after having a round two with the guy that night I realized it wasn't. He then proceeded to lay in bed with me and describe the human centipede. This story should be inspiration for redditors everywhere. You're too shy to talk to that girl down the street? You don't think you're good handsome tall smart enough for her? Think you can't get laid? This guy did. Twice. Now go out there and give em your best, tiger. He probably won a bet for reenacting the great in between us scene. Went out to a club in a bigger city and was staying at my buddy's place. Well at the bar I pick up a girl who was also from out of town, staying at her brother's place. We head over there, with her saying her brother is going to be gone until really late, so it will be fine. So we start freaking on the couch, I'm bare naked going at it, when the front door opens up. You have to understand also, this couch was the first thing you see when you walk in the door. In walks four dudes coming back from a party. I look like a deer caught in the headlights, and then sprint to the washroom assuming one was her brother. I was ready to break through the window when the girl came in and said that her brother had passed out at the party so they left him there. We finished up in the bathroom and then I hightailed it out of there. I went home with a rather large woman. Like freaking huge. After having X I figured I would leave in the middle of the night to avoid an awkward morning. When I went to leave she unconsciously threw her massive thigh over me. Locking me in like a damn seat belt. The morning was awkward, but she made killer pancakes. I feel like I'm reading Cosmo. I went out dancing at this rock club. I had never had a one night stand, and had been single for around 6 months after a very heavy breakup. I started dancing with this one guy who was an incredible dancer. I have a lot of respect for guys who dance without a care and are confident about it. So we chat a bit but then my friend insists we leave. I start to but then I decide to go back to ask for his number and I can't find him, I look some more and tell my friend to just leave without me. At this point I am pretty drunk, I find him, turns out he was looking for me as well. We start making out pretty hard and go to catch a night bus, making out almost the entire way home. Once I get to his house, things start getting pretty hot and heavy. We frick, and I get up to smoke a cigarette as he's passing out. As I walk through his room I start to notice sh Like, letters taped all over his bedroom wall and mirror that are signed love you forever, Alex. There are also pictures of this girl named Alex all over the letters too, and there were a lot of letters and a lot of pictures. I shrug it off and figure maybe something happened to her. I come back from my cigarette and lie next to him and notice the Alex tattoo on the back of his arm as he's sleeping. The next morning, he wakes up and I ask him about Alex. He explains to me that it's his ex-girlfriend he was still in love with, but he's happy because he found me and is so happy to love someone new. I explained to him I was moving away in a month, and he was not in love with me and we should not see each other again, also to maybe not keep hanging those letters up. Kinda sucks, he was a really good lay. This guy is a pro. Sorry to break it to you but that was his current GF who was away. Maybe lives in a different area. The I love you is a great way to scare anyone off. Went home with a girl from a bar. She was absolutely stunning and we hit it off instantly. Started making out hard when she shoved me onto her bed and tore my pants off. Now, she tells me to sit tight while she gets into more comfortable clothing. I'm freaking pumped. She walks out of the room and gives me a wink as she closes the door behind her. She's been gone a minute or so at which point I sit up and casually look around her room. 
I'm not spying on her. I just want to get a sense of who she is by the things she keeps. I'm a soulless empty bastard and my room is barren save for a camping mattress and a computer which is why I never bring girls home. I notice a freaking menagerie of prescription pill bottles, all of which prescribed to her. She's on antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, sleep aid medication, ADD medication, appetite suppressants, you freaking name it, she's got a doctor's signature and a little orange bottle. She came back in wearing the ziest black panties I have ever seen and I thought to myself a, eh, she can't be that crazy. She was. It was a beautiful meet, in the auto parts store. She was 100% my type and clearly interested. She bought me wine, she bought me dinner, she drove me carefully through the growing blizzard to her house on the edge of town. We kissed, we started to undress. Then I literally watched a different person start to see from out her eyes. She narrowed focus, and said you will never hurt me again thus began an hour of physical abuse punches, hurled crockery that I just sat there and took, less because I outweighed her by 30 kilograms than because I was so baffled by what was happening. We're talking crazy town here. Apparently I bore a superficial resemblance to her abusive grandfather, and that set it off. Finally I fled into the night, got my bearings in the howling blizzard, drew the suit jacket that was my only upper body covering around my shoulders, started to walk the 10 km back to my place. My shoes were soon soaked through. Happily, a fat lady driving us now close saw me, picked me up, let me in the cab and gave me tea, and drove me most of the way home. I told her the story, she said bitches be crazy. Twist. The girl became a time traveler in the future and the fat lady was the same girl, who came back to apologize and make up for it by taking you home. This is also my one, and only, online dating experience. Met a girl from Poff, had no car at the time, and she invited me for the evening, 4 hours bus ride. I get there, we're just hanging out and she makes dinner, which was pretty damn awesome. A couple of her friends arrive, before we head to the bar in town, we head out, and it's still somewhat light out. I'm trying to maintain a good impression so I'm not getting tanked at the bar. Having a good time, playing pool, dancing, etc. The bartender calls last call, so while they go up to get a beer, I go to the washroom. I do my business and come back out to an empty bar. In the minute it took me to pee and wash my hands everyone is gone. It's just the bartender cleaning up and me. I figure they're waiting outside for me, so I go out. Parking lot is completely empty. So it's just past 2am, I have only a vague idea how to get back to this girl's place, and it's raining. Soaked to the bone torrential downpour raining, I start making my way back to her place, down a path we took which is now a muddy mess. My ankle goes sideways and I'm in the mud screaming. Realizing there's no one around, and getting pretty peered at the whole situation, I somehow hobble my way back to her place. The door's still unlocked small town and she's not home, so I pack my clothes and make my way back to the bus stop liquor store parking lot. I'm sitting on the cement stairs, just waiting, it's about 3.30 am at this point. The bus doesn't come until 10 a.m., but I'm done with the evenings. Sh then I hear a sobbing sound coming up the hill. She'd been so plastered she forgot about me and walked her friends home. I hobbled her home racked out for a couple of hours, and when I woke up I had to literally crawl to the living room because my ankle was so fricked. Mashed it into a shoe, gimped my way to the bus and left. Foot looked like a purple Nerf football with a swelling and bruising. I slept with a girl on my course biology. I left the next morning. We had the same class but didn't go together. She turned up late and took the seat next to me and only realized once it was too late. Very awkward. Class starts and it's on contraceptives and how effective they are. Oh man. Was in Calgary in 2009. Went to a concert in Edmonton with this chick who was a friend. We were meeting her friend there who I'd never met. 
chick is smoking hot and seems cool. Before I know it, the second chick was under the impression me and chick 1 were an item. Chick 1 gets embarrassed when I confront her and leaves. Fuck, I'm stranded in Edmonton and my ride is gone. So myself and chick 2 hit it off and have a good night, get pretty wasted. Go back to her house lives with family and we hit the couch and proceed to frick like Jamaican sprinters. I wake up to cooking not 10 meters away. I'm named on the floor of a kitchen sitting room and her mom is cooking. Luckily I have a blanket covering my eyes apart. Awkward chat with the mom. No clothes to be seen. Mom had washed my wet clothes. I stay there for 3 hours with a towel around me. With a family of rednecks watching Knight Rider. TLDR. I'm on my phone. The thread is about horror stories. Not the best one night stands ever. Do not fix isopod. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.